Good morning. These gems in. Come in. It's almost five in the morning. Friday the thirteenth. Four fifty seven. I'd like to finish up this is part three of the talking jackasses that we're dealing with this is from book two of Peter chapter two he refers to the talking jackass stopping the course of the mad prophet Balaam and this refers back to numbers chapter 22 with the fullness of that story of the talking jackass. I just want to go into some of the understanding and overstanding of that is. So, when I talk about a talking jackass and the Hegelian dialectic, and if I call, or you think I call, Putin, a talking jackass. If you think I'm saying something bad about him, take warning. You better go study Numbers 22. The talking jackass that saves the life of Balaam. the very spirit that talked to him in that jackass <clears throat> is the spirit of the Most High. So to get specific in Numbers 22 to bring it down Balaam who is a prophet or a mad prophet call what you want. A prophet is not necessarily a man of God you know. And the prophet is not someone necessarily to make predictions. If you understand what prophecy is. Prophecy can make things happen and make things not happen sometimes. But Balaam in his course of life as a human, which involves a lot of madness and bad behavior, had his donkey, his jackass he was riding on, and the donkey was bucking him. Balaam is beating the donkey worse and worse, till finally the donkey starts to speak. Now, as it was, the donkey had seen the angel of the Lord who was there that wanted to strike Balaam some previous actions of Balaam and the donkey was trying to avert that angel finally the Lord opened up Balaam's eye that he saw the angel standing there and immediately Balaam went down and bowed and asked for forgiveness for his sin the angel Let's just say the angel let him go on with a message and an order. The story of Balaam goes on, but the incident of the donkey, the talking jackass, brought to life in the Hegelian dialectic, where your own words quite often are brought to act against you and you to take the role of another participant and to, for your own words, to prosecute yourself sometimes. In other times, the Hegelian dialectic will be a 
think your basketball coach landed on a planet and they don't know about basketball they don't know about having a coach and you gotta teach them another way the Hegelian dialectic works on us is let's say you're a baseball player let's say you're a rebel baseball player You want to go outside the game. You want to hit a foul ball. You're going to hit a foul ball, and guess what's going to happen? They're going to catch it and say it's fair and keep you in play. And they're going to move the sidelines just to keep you in play. If you try and get out of bounds, they're going to move the sidelines, they'll move the goals, they'll change the rules. Be careful. Be careful when they change the rules. But they definitely will change your position at the table. They'll spin the table. And you won't know you're sitting in someone else's place. Mm-hmm. So anyways, what we have is we have Obama at the G20 busting up the G20 meeting by calling Putin a jackass. And with a certain amount of disrespect as Balam beat his jackass. But lo and behold, what do we find now? What do we find now? We find the talking jackass coming up with a proposal to store ke serious chemical weapons. And now with his op-ed piece in the New York Times, we have the talking jackass coming as a savior for Obama to get him out of his warmonger position that he boxed himself into with that red line about chemical weapons, which was a bad move for a leader to, to place himself in that position, to allow himself to be boxed into a war, drawn into a war needlessly by Al-Qaeda, so what we have here is a classic case of a talking jackass once again coming true as a savior. Hmm. Sounds a little bit like the section I discussed the other day in Mark 3 and Matthew 12 when Jesus' family came and said, Jesus, you're mad. Hmm. When his own family accused Jesus of being a talking jackass. Sounds a little bit like that, doesn't it? The Hegelian dialectic, the way it's playing right now with the world leaders. One thing with Hegelian, you can't win, you know. It's a chicken and egg thing can't win with the Hegelian. And to know how to play the Hegelian, you really need to be an ascended master or a guided one. One who's called and chosen. One who one who has the armor of Christ that he can rely on. One who has full takia privilege and authority. One authorized like Isaiah 10.5. Mm-hmm. One authorized like in Daniel 4.17. Because we all have puppet strings, you know. We all have ones above us. We wear their puppets. You know, sometimes you have to be careful with the galleon because 
We are their reality show. Okay? Now, what you don't know sometimes is that sometimes we're in the audience, but sometimes everybody else in the audience is for them. Or almost everybody in the audience is for them. Sometimes everybody outside the show is for them. You know that? Sometimes it's like one man against the world. It's what it is with Satan's full, unexcelled possession of the earth, the atmosphere, and its inhabitants. And its inhabitants included two-legged, four-legged, no-legged. So, as above, so below. I want to tie some of the Hegelian techniques to timelines and what you may call alternate or parallel universes but to understand how to accept the timeline as a thread the timeline is like the DNA strand of time, you know. And each individual one of us has moments that are different. I'm going to have to get to this in a different video. I want to finish the talking jackasses. I think I finished it. We need to get further because the Fibonacci is tightening. And unless people make that quantum jump, quanta, unless the people make the quanta jump from 3D to 5D, may not be so good to be stuck in this situation here. This, we're in a 4D, you know. We're in between 3 and 5. There is no four. With the space in between. You know what that thing is? <clears throat> you ever take two magnets? You know you take two magnets is I that funny space in between. Oh, oh. That funny space in between. Not good to get caught in there. 